Hey, welcome back to Two Star Garage. Today we've got a 2010 Ford Explorer in the shop. Uh, it's a limited and it's got some transmission issues. Customer says it is shifting rough and before it shifts rough, it slips. So today we're gonna install a special servo kit. We're gonna hope it fixes the issue. Thanks for hanging out, I'm Justin. Let's get started. This Explorer's got the 4.0 V6. We got Moose in the shop today. Hey, Mooser. Okay, so with this kit, you get the OD and the IM servos. You got a snap ring for each. And they do provide you with spare O-rings. I'll tell you how it goes on in case you need to put it on. Hopefully you don't need those. You got your uh, return springs to give you two of those. You got your OD servo and your IM servo replacement O-rings. So that is really what the kit comes with. One other thing it recommends is the Silglide lubricant I could have used something that was similar, but I just wanted to go with exactly what they were calling for. And we've got some emery cloth. I think it's fine, medium, and coarse that we've got in here. So we're going to use the fine stuff. That should work well. I'm going to try to show you guys everything. I found out that I need to take this bracket off so we're gonna do that so we got two 13 millimeter bolts that we got to take off sorry if it's a little noisy in the background I've got both air conditioners going today there's one Let's see if we can get this other one here I don't know which arm gets more tired the one that's doing the work or the one that's just holding the camera I feel like it's a toss-up those bolts are both the same size so don't worry about how you put them back so we just want to be able to slide this just enough out of the way some people end up having to take this clip off and that's holding this line in but we're not gonna have to do that we're gonna be able to get our wrench right up in here crack that loose turn this I don't think I'll be able to show you that, but I'll keep the camera down here just in case. Okay, I took the side heat cover off. We got three 13 millimeter bolts. And um, we also got the two bolts for the top cover that goes above the catalytic converter. I did take this mud shield off, went right there. Uh, I wanted to get a little more ability to just push this out a little bit while I reached my hand up and in because it's hard to get to the bolt. It does take a little bit of time to work those loose. I'm gonna make sure I put some anti-seize on them once we go to reinstall them. All right, I think you can see. So we've got the connection to the O2 sensor right here. We're going to disconnect that with a screwdriver. We've got this upper heat cover off. The other one just goes right over here. And there was, you know, they're just, they bolt right into the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and get that off. I, got, I need two hands for this and then I'll be back. So I got the O2 sensor disconnected. And now we need to flex this top heat cover out so we can get to our two servos. When we go to take them out. Whatever you do, just make sure you don't put pressure on your O2 sensor. That's gonna be no good if you do that. Here it comes. 
Oh, move you guys out of the way. Okay, let's see if I can hold you here. There we go. Here it is. We had to bend this part a little bit. That didn't really bend at all. Um, we're good. When it goes back in there, this is how it's going to be over, front to back. Got our lower shield right there. I had to have the camera down for a while because it takes two hands. I was fighting the snap ring to get it so that way the uh, the clips were down towards the bottom because they were way over here to the right. Yeah, let me get this up. And I could not get the custom snap ring pliers to grab onto it. So I finally got them slid down, got it out, got the servo out. Looks pretty clean from what I can see, but I gonna give you guys a shot here hopefully you can see I'll see later but uh, hopefully everything looks good in there we're gonna go ahead and smooth that out that bore give you a glimpse of what it looks like here's the o-ring the old one you can have a new one right there here's the cap a little bit of fluid came out with that um, everything on the cap looks good we're gonna replace these o-rings Here's the actual servo itself. Got your return spring. I don't see a whole lot of wear. Everything looks okay on it. Just leave that together at the moment. We're gonna go ahead and put the other servo in shortly. Okay, we're gonna get ready to smoothen out that bore. And the instructions say get a 3 8 dowel or a 3 8 drill bit, so there we go. So we've got our 3M fine emery cloth. So we're just gonna cut a little bit off of this. And I went ahead and ran this on the wire wheel just for a little bit to make sure it was smoothened out. No rust or anything on it. We don't wanna contaminate anything in there make it rough in any way. Only need a little bit for this. So we're just gonna go ahead and go just like that. Won't be able to show you this because I'm down under and there's no way you're gonna be able to see, so stand by. Okay, here's the old, here's the new. Got our old return spring, our old OD. The smaller one is the OD servo. Let's keep our spring on there, keep all our old parts on there. Got a pick here. I like to keep all the old parts together until the job's done. Inside of the cap is nice and clean. I'm just going to put a little bit of sill glide on these. New seals are on. Okay, at this point, make sure that your servo is all wiped down. Your new servo. And you're gonna put some sill glide. Just drop some right on. Don't be afraid to be liberal with it. Make sure you get your rubber seal. 
and also the servo shaft. When you install it, this white sleeve stays on. If you look at this one, you can see a difference. You don't have a white sleeve on there. Okay, once you get your seal glide on it, you're gonna go ahead and make sure your servo cap is cleaned out. You're gonna install right in. And I'm seeing no difference, which is good. Lastly, we're gonna put the return spring on. I'm just gonna put a little sill glide on this just to slide it over our sleeve. There we go. I think the sill glide helps just a little bit to get it over without having to push so hard on it. And I think we're good to go. Let's go put this back on the vehicle. Okay, I'm not quite sure where we left off, but I will tell you that we've got the first servo installed, um, but the cap isn't going down all the way so I can get that snap ring in. So looking at the directions, you can just try turning it, rotating it, uh, and then you will find that it gets over uh, what it's catching on the chamfer. So I'm not gonna be able to take you down and show you how I use this, but you can see it on the other videos how they do it. Um, I need two hands for this for sure. And once that snap ring is in, that servo is all the way done, we'll move on to the IM servo. Okay, what you can see is the OD servo. And you can see that the snap ring is in. You can see the clips towards the bottom there. And what I had to do was, I had to adjust the cap by rotating it clockwise, kind of over and over again. And then at one point in time, I kept with the continuous uh, turn and then apply medium pressure, turn and then apply medium pressure, the cap went in so I could actually see the snap ring groove. So there it is, there's one done. Let's get on to the other one right over there. There's not a lot of space under here, so you just gotta take your time, make sure it gets done. Don't break the servo shaft. If you're applying pressure, make sure you apply it right in the middle of that cap. And it's a job, but you can do it. So now essentially if you've got these snap rings along with the kit, which I would recommend, I'm gonna go ahead and grab right here and I'm gonna pull this way. And I'm gonna need two hands for this, but we're just gonna move the snap ring clips right over here so we can get to it, get that out. Okay, I'm just gonna let you guys know that I started working on this at one o'clock, it's now two, and I just got the snap ring out of the IM servo. So let's see if we can get that servo out now. So it's right here. I got it to pop out. I took a screwdriver and I just barely put any pressure and it popped out. Let's see if we can wiggle this off. Probably have some stuff dripping out. Yeah, there's some fluid coming out. This should just pull out. Hopefully we can clear that O2 sensor. Fought with this snap ring for over an hour. As you can see, it's not worn. It's just a challenge to get out. You can do it though. There's our new return spring. Let's just compare the two. Yeah, they look good. Return spring looks good. Here's our cap. Cap looks good. And here is the servo. Just looking at this, looks okay. I'm trying to see if I can see any wear marks. I don't, it all looks, looks good. I'll tell you what, that was effort to get that out of there. So, it can be done and if you do it the second time, I'm sure you improve with every single time you do it. I'm comparing our servos right here. Everything looks good. Looks the same on the top as on the bottom. So with that said, let's keep the cap. Old return spring. 
old snap ring. This has only got one seal on it. We got two in the kit. We'll compare these to make sure they're the same. Maybe we can get it there. You can see my hands are just shaking. It was a lot of effort under there. Here we go. We'll put our new seal on. Get a little sill glide on it. Make sure the new servo is nice and cleaned up and let's put a liberal amount of seal, seal glide on this. Make sure you uh, put seal glide on the shaft again. Probably should be wearing gloves. My gloves ripped as usual during the job, during the work process of getting that out. We're not gonna put this back on the table. We don't want any contaminants, so it's nice and lubricated. Definitely it doesn't want to go in without being burped. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. I'll need two hands, but I'll be back. I'll uh, we'll show you what it looks like when it's underneath and installed. Okay, so we're back under the Explorer, and what you can see is you can actually see the servo without the cap. And that's because we've got this O2 sensor right here on this 2010 Ford Explorer. We had to get the servo in, and then I just reached up and I just gently started it light to uh, light medium pressure and it gently starts and now i'm going to go ahead and take the cap and i'm going to put it on the cap goes on with no problem so i don't have to worry about that and then i will use the special tool the wrench with the wood on it and i will push it in the rest of the way we'll get the snap ring on and then we're on to the band adjustment Okay, so we've got it in. I'm gonna release this wedge. Make sure you've got it in all the way around. Don't want to have it not be in or you're gonna have problems. All right, we're in all the way around. Splash shield's back on. I'll show you the setup that I use for this. We've got two three-ton jacks and we got a three-ton rapid pump jack. And make sure that the vehicle is not going to come down on you. Um, I've got a jack down there as well. It's not in use. I was going to put it down there, but I figured I was good, good and safe with this. So take care of yourself. Okay, now we're going to put our heat shields on. We're going to put your lower heat shield on second. So. Took this off second, this is gonna go on first. This is your upper heat shield. Two 13 millimeter bolts, stubby ratchet. All right, so what you're looking at, if I can get the light right for you guys and gals. Here is the heat shield. This is the upper heat shield. Here's our O2 sensor. And we've got our sensor connected. Got a 13 millimeter bolt right over this catalytic converter. 13 millimeter bolt just right over this. You can actually get to this one right here, going through the front passenger wheel well, that works the best. This one over here, just uh, by the rocker actually, right by the front passenger door. You can reach up and in and just barely get to it. The smaller hands you have, the better. Get our lower heat shield on. And secured. This is the lower heat shield. And there's three 13 mils on this lower heat shield, so we're just gonna get that top one, which you probably can't really see. It's in a tough spot. So get this last one. We will just bend that a little bit. Get your hand up in there and start cranking. Heat shields are on, upper, lower, sensor, sensors connected. Uh, we got our servos in, both the IM and the OD servo. We got our uh, snap rings in, everything is secured up. Let's go to the other side and we'll adjust 
the transmission bands for the IM and the OD. Okay, we're all done being underneath the Explorer. Everything's on, we got the heat shields on, we got the servos in, all the seals replaced, return springs replaced. The bands torqued down, we torqued them down 120 inch pounds, backed them off one and a half turns. We tightened up the lock nuts with the seals uh, to 40 foot pounds. Okay, with everything done, I'm gonna go get cleaned up. Don't wanna hop in with these dirty clothes. We're gonna connect the battery, lower it down, and we'll take it for a test drive, so. Stand by just one moment. All right, battery's connected. We verify there's nothing under the truck. And we're gonna start it up for the first time here. And okay, we're started up. No check engine lights, nothing like that. Let's go check and see if we got any leaks. Everything looks good so far. We've got reverse. We got neutral. We got drive. We got neutral again. Park. All right, let's see if we can take this for a drive here. There's one shift in a second. And I'm actually gonna pull over here, just park in the middle of the road. I'm gonna get out and I'm just gonna check to make sure we still have no leaks. Everything looking good. You can smell some WD-40 burning off that catalytic converter. Put some on the O2 sensor just so I could loosen it up, hopefully, if I needed to. So this is a 2010 Ford Explorer. And uh, I can't remember, it's got that famous transmission that has those servo issues. I talked to the owner this morning and they said that it's kind of temperamental when it wants to be. These servos, the shafts and the bores tend to wear and cause slippage problems. So it's good to get it replaced anyways. Let's see if we can get another shift here. 